This happened when I was younger, around eight or nine. I grew up on a reservation in eastern Maine. I lived with my mother and brother who was younger. We lived in a two-story, multi-dwelling unit or public housing. A vast wooded area was in my backyard. Surrounded by deep woods, it wouldn't take much to get lost. But I always enjoyed venturing out and was very familiar with the territory. It was late winter, with about four to five inches of snow on the ground. I heard knocking on the front and back door at the same time, around 1 a.m. in the morning. I noticed it first, and then my mother got up and told my brother and I to stay in the room. She called the police and went downstairs to see if someone was actually at the door. I kept hearing the knocking, but as my mother got closer and closer to the door, it suddenly stopped. No one she could see was visible outside the door, and the police finally showed up not long after. Lights lit up the front of our place. Neighbors came out to see what was going on. All of them said they didn't hear or see anyone. Police searched around our property to see if anyone was hiding or ran off, but they didn't find anything. A cruiser stayed in our parking lot for the majority of the night just in case someone came back. Sunrise came and the officer left early that morning. My mother and the next door neighbor went outside, I assumed, to talk about what had happened. She then noted that footprints in the snow went along the building leading to our front door and then back all the way into the forest. But these footprints were strange. It's as if someone was wearing pointed boots, men sized between 10 to 12. The prints were inverted, as if the toes were facing each other, not at an angle, directly facing each other in a straight line. The creepiest part about them was the steps of the footprints moved side to side. Toes were inverted and looked as if they jumped like side to side in a perfect straight line leading into the woods. My mother didn't say anything about them till later on in life when I was older. But I knew they were there. It was obvious. I know what you're thinking. Maybe someone was playing some kind of prank and faked it. There were other footprints in the snow around the strange ones. But only around the building. I assume the other footprints were made by the officers due to the fact that they looked normal. But there were no other prints in the snow leading into the tree line. I followed the prints into the woods. No other markings around them perfectly inverted side to side hops or steps in the snow leading deeper and deeper into the forest. It got to the point where there was an uneasy feeling that started to creep over me. Like something was telling me to go back. But I knew where the prints were leading. As I said, I'm very familiar with the area. It eventually would have led me to a marsh or bog area. And I got chilled by that thought and for some reason turned around. I never said anything to my mother about it until much later on. I never heard or encountered anything like that since. If anyone has any thoughts or ideas of what it could be, I would greatly appreciate it. So this happened last summer. It was around 11 p.m. and I was sitting at my dinner table typing away on my final paper for the semester. Behind me sits my kitchen and a big window that overlooks my backyard. This backyard was surrounded completely by a six foot vinyl privacy fence. And inside that fence was a little garden I'd been working on. Lots of cute flowers and a little pond. I was proud of it and would leave the blinds open so I could take in all my hard work during the day. I was caught up in my paper that was due by midnight, and since it was late, the dogs were snoozing away nearby. Concentration was broken by a very sudden, very loud, and very deliberate <laughs> behind me. I froze completely, and it dawned on me I never closed my blinds. All my interior lights were on, and we know how that works. Whoever was tapping could see me perfectly. Weirdly, and inconveniently enough, my dogs who normally bark at the slightest noise were still sound asleep. It took me about five minutes to muster the slightest ounce of courage to turn my head just enough to see the window in my periphery, only to hear a loud crunch and another couple of taps, just a bit lighter. Nope. Fuck that. No need to look. The last thing I needed was to see a face pressed up against that window. To my left was a door to the carport, which led to the backyard. The handle was within arm's reach, and I wouldn't have to look at the window to open it. Called to my dogs, and they jumped up as soon as I turned the knob. I guess the watcher realized what I did. 
About 30 seconds passed, and I heard a couple more crunches, and then a very loud thud. If you've ever heard a vinyl fence being smacked against, it's a bit distinctive, and I knew they jumped it. My dogs finally went nuts, and I ran to the window near that thud. Lights off and blinds closed there, thankfully. I caught a quick glimpse of a leg disappearing behind the corner of my neighbor's house. I stayed up until dawn with my metal baseball bat and one of those giant sharp grill forks. With the fence and dogs, I always felt safe. How they got back there so quietly, I'll never know. I've lived here my whole life and never had anything happen, so this really has shaken me. Whoever that was wanted me to know that they were there and definitely wanted my attention. I've installed multiple cameras and motion lights all around the perimeter of my house. It's been quiet since. I feel better, but that illusion of safety has all but disappeared. I'm a 33 year old single male who lives alone in Denver. My apartment complex is not what you would call a nice building. I'm on a road close to Koufax Avenue, which if you're familiar with, the geography of this area is not the safest boulevard in town. And I'm a few streets away from it, but close enough that I wouldn't consider this an up and coming neighborhood. This evening I was watching Netflix on my couch. My two cats were cuddled up against me as I lay under a comforter. The night before, I had watched a horror movie that was scary enough to leave me in an unsettled mood making it difficult to sleep. So this night, I decided to watch a stand-up special instead, keeping it light so I wouldn't have any trouble getting some shut-eye. I have classes early the next morning, so I was surprised when I made the conscious decision to turn on a second stand-up special and let myself fall asleep on the couch. I was just so comfy where I lay and that I didn't want to move, not even to turn off the several lights I had on throughout my apartment. I remember dozing off around 11 p.m., it was effortless, which meant I was really snug under the covers with my cat flanking me on either side, creating a kind of tucked-in feeling. I fell into a dream wherein I was on an impromptu date with this guy, whom I didn't recognize. We were at a Blockbuster video store. He bought me blue and yellow underwear, you know, like the Blockbuster would sell in Dreamland. Insinuating, I would take the hint of his intentions. He was also desperate for a job, so when we got to the counter, he was given an off-the-cuff interview that didn't go well. Then all of a sudden, I'm not sleeping anymore. I'm woken up by a knock at my door, and a man's voice saying, Maintenance! I just sat there, sitting bolt upright on my couch. I knew something was off. I looked at my phone, which was by my left hand, and the time was 2.15am. I didn't move. The floors in my apartment were old wood, and there were many creaking floorboards. I didn't want whoever was knocking to know that someone was at home and awake, let alone alert to his presence. My cats got up and ran over to the door as they normally would, but I stayed still and listened. After a few minutes of no answer, the man walked away from the door and down the hallway to the stairs. A moment after that, I heard the back door to the building swing open and closed. I have one window where I have a partial view of that door, so I break my paralysis and race over to it. I saw an old looking green SUV sitting in the no parking zone just in front of the back door. It must have been running the entire time because I didn't hear it start up and the brake lights were glowing red. Someone, presumably the quote unquote maintenance man, got in the car and drove off. I don't know what his intentions were, but no one knocks on someone's door at 2.15am claiming to work for the landlord with good deeds in mind. Had it been a true emergency, wouldn't he have knocked again? Or used his service key to get inside the unit? What did I just avoid here? I can only assume it was an attempted robbery or at best abduction at worst. When I was watching that SUV drive off, I surveyed the other apartment windows. They were all dark and I can see every unit except the other two corner apartments below me from that vantage point. I think because my apartment sticks out from the building and has many windows, I was targeted because my lights were visibly on and noticeable from the street. However, I don't know how this individual got into the building in the first place, as you would need a key to do so. I've never been so legitimately afraid as a single person living alone. 
I'm grateful I installed a security chain on my door when I moved in as well. I'm also grateful that even in my disoriented state, I had the presence of mind not to move from my couch or make any noise. As I recount this event, I can't stop my eyes from leaking tears, though I wouldn't call it crying. My nerves are definitely shot. I don't think I'll be going back into dreamland anytime soon tonight. I've turned off all the lights save for the lamp by my bed. I usually can't sleep with it on. Tonight, I don't think I could sleep with it off. Although it doesn't seem like it, this happened quite a while back, probably over 10 years ago. I was in the later years of high school and was home alone. My parents were at a wedding that required them to stay at a hotel. My brother worked the night shift. At that time, my family lived in a very well-known East Coast city, in a blue-collar neighborhood that was starting to take a nosedive. As a teenager, I was a bit of a loner. I wasn't a nerd or anything. I was a big dude who had friends and went on dates. But I'm a natural introvert. So I cherished the rare alone time that I would get. This weekend, I was looking forward to engaging in my normal empty house routine. Play some PlayStation on the big screen TV, then order some late night takeout, pizza or maybe Chinese, while pegging out and watching some Dragon Ball Z. Then around 2am, fall asleep on the couch with my old dog Cecil. Cecil was a beagle who was old as the hills. He had been in our family for around 8 years. He was quiet and peaceful, and spent his time begging for food and sleeping. Unlike most beagles, Cecil never howled or barked. He was more than content to rest his head on your lap and spend the night there. Anyways, back to the story. It's approximately 1am, and I had just finished the last slice of that ooh so tasty pisha, and was dozing off on the couch. When I heard a big bang coming from the back alleyway, I didn't think much of it. Anyone who has lived in a city knows noises happen at all hours of the night. Cecil's head popped up off my lap, and the hair on his back stood up. He was always a bit skittish, so I calmed down and started dozing off again. Not more than two minutes later, I hear another bang, and Cecil did something I've never seen him do before. He left off the couch and ran like the wind towards the door leading to the basement, barking and growling like a dog twice his size. The look on his face reminded me of a German Shepherd canine unit. I'd never seen him bark like that before, which got my adrenaline pumping. Through the dog's barking, I could now make out a persistent banging. There was a seldom used door in the basement that led to our back alleyway. It was old and rusted, extremely hard to open, even with the key, and it made a lot of noise. I suddenly realized that someone was trying to break into my house through our basement door. A little bit of context for anyone who hasn't lived in a bad neighborhood. If someone tries to get into your house and moves on after they realize the door is locked, they want your stuff. If someone is persistent trying to get into your house despite the door being locked, well, they want you. Knowing this, I rush upstairs to grab a heavy wooden baseball bat that I kept under my bed for situations just like this. Then I head down to my basement. I probably should have just ran, but I was a macho teenager with some tough guy complex and I had nowhere to go. I'm heading down the stairs to my basement. Cecil blows past me with the speed and aggression of a dog half his age. Suddenly I hear a man's voice say, oh fuck, and then the banging stopped. I didn't call the cops or anyone else, which was probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. Just sat up for the rest of the night with a bat in my hand. My brother came home that next morning and I told him what had happened. We went to the basement door to take a look, and when we gave it a tug to open it, the entire door fell off. This psycho was one good shove away from getting into the house, but old Cecil scared him off. Pretty sure that lazy fat dog saved my life. When I tell this story, they dismiss his actions as a dog doing what a dog was supposed to do. But when I tell you that Cecil never barked or moved fast in his life, you can take that to the bank. It was almost like he knew the urgency. Like he knew that door was about to give. A few years back, we had to have him put down because he just had no will to live anymore. Before the injection, I got a moment alone with him. I thanked him one last time for his friendship and for what he did for me that night. At this point, I was a grown man with a wife and kids, and I'm more than convinced that none of that would have happened without old Cecil. Thanks, pal. I miss you.
I live in a small, small town. If you blink, you'll miss it. Best we can boast about is a single stop sign and a gas station, which we only have because of the nearby highway. And the actual semblance of a town is 25 minutes away. So when things get scary out here, it's definitely amplified. The occasional homeless person is not a big deal. They're often just drifting through. Drug addicts run rampant and will steal everything they can from your house, but it's normal out here. However, what happened a few years ago certainly wasn't normal. Originally, I was in a dead sleep in my bed. I only woke up because it was burning hot in my room. But it was summertime and not much I could do about it. I just remember tossing and turning until I got a creepy feeling that fell into the pit in my stomach. I glanced over to the bathroom door that was open with the light on. Everything seemed normal. I left the light on so I wouldn't trip and die if I had to pee in the middle of the night. Next, I glanced at the windows directly across from my bed. I had no curtains, but I did have a shitty set of blinds. Part of the blinds are broken from wear and tear, and the crappy AC output beneath it would make them move back and forth every so often. The yard light was still on, but what made me stop was the outline at my window. Figure of someone was directly at my window, almost like it was waiting for the blinds to move and watch me. I didn't have an imagination as a child, and that had been trained right out of me. But the sight was enough to pour every horror film into my head in that moment. I squeezed my eyes shut and pulled my blankets over my head and slept in a cloth oven that night. By morning time, the figure was gone. I remember running to my mom's room on the verge of tears in the morning, telling her about what had happened. She laughed at me like I was an idiot and told me it was probably just a stray cat that had climbed up there for one odd reason or the other. I almost believed her since my window was pretty high off the ground. Something just did not sit right. Later, when we were doing yard work, I glanced over at my window and saw one of our metal patio chairs had been pushed up to it. I pointed it out to my mom, who proceeded to chew me out. That's how the cat probably got up there, moron. Stop leaving furniture everywhere. But I had moved it. It was heavy enough that I struggled with it. So we moved it back, and so began a pattern. At night, I'd see a figure, complain to my mom, and we'd find the chair moved back every single morning. This went on for weeks and weeks. My mother stopped caring about my concerns until one morning we saw where the outside screen of my window had been sliced open. I still remember her shaking her head and complaining about those damn stray cats that we had still yet to see. I could tell she was unnerved by that development. I couldn't handle it anymore. I opted to sleep in our living room that night. The only problem was our kitchen and living room were connected, which meant there were always several windows. The first night of my move went well despite my back hurting from the couch. I avoided my room like the plague. It wasn't until about four days later we ran into an issue. I woke up and glanced at the clock above the fireplace, and it read a little past 3 a.m. Couldn't realize why I'd woken up until it happened again. There was a beam of light shining in from the kitchen window. Almost like someone was shining a flashlight in. I saw it trace along the walls and land on the love seat across from the couch I was on. I was mortified. I told my mom she continued to laugh at me. I gave in and decided I would sleep in my dad's room, even though it had a gigantic window. He slept in the recliner with a huge TV, so I felt safe having someone around. The yard light was directly outside the window, so it seemed foolproof. That was until I woke up out of habitual fear and watched through the window across from the bed. Everything seemed normal for just a moment. As time drug on, I felt more and more like a moron. Maybe my mom was right. That was until I saw a lone figure come out of the woods by the backyard shed, walk directly under the light, and head to the patio furniture like he'd been here plenty of times before. I still remember that large build the man had, and the confidence was like he was the one who lived here and wasn't creeping around my yard in the dead of night. I just remember listening to the TV until I fell asleep again. Hoping to get another glimpse, my dad would have been pissed if I had woken him up. He was grumpy on a good day, and terrifying on a bad day. I didn't feel like risking it unless I had solid proof because I was scared. The next morning, my mom chewed me out again for the same patio furniture. It was now a routine almost a month later, but this time something new had happened. She demanded I stop playing in the toolboxes of the garage. A bunch of tools had been taken out and left on our doorstep. Screwdrivers, a large hammer, flashlights, etc. It wasn't me. I begged my mom and pleaded with her, just stay up with me one night. We couldn't close our garage because it was an open carport. 
And I wasn't going to get my ass beaten for touching tools because of someone else. It was driving me mad. Finally, she agreed. And that night, we would stay awake in the living room. I finally fell asleep before my mom did. But I remember her waking me up in a panic. She pointed to the window that overlooked into our garage. We could see the top of someone's head as they walked back and forth. There was a sound of someone placing metal tools down on the brick steps. As if they were trying to be quiet but couldn't fully muffle it. She whispered for me to go wake my dad. My dad was angry, having been woken up in the middle of the night by his frantic daughter. He grabbed his pistol and headed out from the back door, towards the front of the house where the garage was located. We heard my dad screaming and someone dropping tools, then the shot of a gun twice. The frantic footsteps pounded out of the garage felt like they were coming from my chest. My mom peeked out the window and then opened the door. My dad stumbled in. He had missed both shots because of his unstable aim, but told us that there was a man crouching at our front door, looking at our door handle. None of us slept that night, and in the morning, the law from the closest town arrived. They didn't do much but ask if anything else had been stolen, for a description of the man, and then told us to install cameras. That was it. They said the guy was probably just looking for something easy to steal for quick money. If that had been the case, why didn't he steal any of the tools, the generator, the welder, or broken into any of the vehicles just sitting in the garage? We finally set up some hunting trail cameras around the house, but nothing has happened since. Coming home from college for the holidays, I still have nightmares about the incident years later, especially when I sleep in my own bed. I don't know what he was looking for or why he did the things he did. Whatever the case may be, man at the window, let's not meet. This happened a long time ago, the time I was living alone in a first floor apartment. My girlfriend had been sick at the time and ended up in the hospital dealing with a rare disease. She recovered fine from it, but during those weeks my life was pretty much go to work, go to the hospital to be with her, come back to the house for dinner, and then bed. It was Friday night and I was alone, so I decided to distract myself by reading and watching some videos on YouTube. Hours passed, and at 3am, I was in bed with my iPad in hand, almost falling asleep. And I heard it. I knew that sound pretty well. You see, outside, right in front of my bedroom door, there was a long corridor that leads directly to the kitchen. This apartment was in a building built in the 50s, and the kitchen door was old, and had become slightly bent. That meant that whenever you turned the doorknob to open the door, it would snap out of place with a distinct clack sound. And that was the sound I had just heard. A lot of thoughts ran through my mind in that moment. Had I dreamt it in my semi-sleeping state? Or maybe the sound was real, but what had happened was the doorknob internal mechanism broke and it opened by itself. Or, of course, maybe someone was in my house and they had just opened the door. At this point, my heart was racing and I started considering my options. I had a broomstick next to my bed. You may ask why I had it there, and to be honest, I had it exactly there because I lived alone and thought one day I might be in a situation like this, where I would need some kind of weapon. My girlfriend even used to joke about it, but I guess that my paranoia was now paying off in the most unfortunate of situations. So I decided I was going to take that stick on one hand and grab my cell phone in the other. I would open up my bedroom door while calling 911. And if no one else was in the apartment, I would just apologize to the operator on the other end of the line and explain the situation. However, back in those days, my cell phone wasn't yet a smartphone because it had this feature I found interesting, even though I hardly ever used it. If you pressed on a couple of specific keys, it would start ringing like someone was calling you. It was meant to be used when you wanted to simulate you were getting a call to get out of a boring conversation or tough situation. Clumsily, I pressed on those keys and the phone started ringing. I quickly shut it up, but now it become clear inside the apartment that I was awake. If someone was outside my bedroom, they certainly heard it. What was going to happen? I stopped for a few seconds to hear my surroundings. Nothing. It was dead quiet. I decided to continue with my plan. I dialed 911 with one hand and raised the broomstick with the other and quickly opened the door. As soon as I did that, someone sprinted in front of me in the corridor and quickly got into the kitchen, closing the door behind them. I screamed, 
Hey! And started pursuing. But a split second later, I thought, stop. What if there is someone else in the apartment? What if another intruder sneaks up on you from behind? In front of me, there was a corridor in the kitchen. But on my left, there was another corridor that led to the living room and office. The office had the light on, so the intruder had to be in there. But I didn't know if he had company. I took a step back into the entrance of my room so that I wouldn't be caught off guard. Sir, are you there? The 911 operator was calling me on the phone. I quickly explained to him what was happening, gave him my address, and he told me the police were on their way. They had a patrol car nearby, so I should just wait, and then he hung up. The apartment was dead silent, and I was terrified. There's only three things I had been able to notice on the intruder. He had a light colored sweatshirt with horizontal black lines, dark hair, and he smelled really bad. In fact, the smell was still in my apartment, and I could still sense it. Police arrived after seven or eight minutes, which felt like ages. The apartment door was next to the bedroom, so I managed to quickly approach it and unlock the door to let them in. I explained what had happened to the police and they had said we should go through the whole apartment and check every single hiding place. They had seen situations like this before where a burglar had hidden himself for a long period of time, even after the homeowners had called the police, just to later attack them. The apartment wasn't that big, so it was easy to conclude that no one else was hiding there. In the kitchen, it was obvious what had happened. It had these large windows that faced the back of the building, where we had a small community garden. I had left one of the windows open next to it, and on the ground, there was a large drain pipe along the wall. The intruder had used the pipe to climb inside my window and get in. The police left to go look around the neighborhood for someone matching the description of the sweatshirt I described. While they were gone, it still smelled that horrible odor the intruder had left in the apartment. After around 20 minutes, they came back. They couldn't find anyone. The burglar was long gone. Luckily, he didn't have the chance to steal anything while he was inside. But the audacity, I mean, he must have seen the light on in my bedroom through the edges of the door. And he still tried walking past it to seal something from the office. I didn't sleep that night. In the morning, I went to the garden in the back to try to find further clues about the intruder. But didn't find anything. The neighbor in the building next door was at the window and I called out to her. I told her what had happened and she smiled and said, Well, welcome to the neighborhood. We all have stories like that in this place should never leave your windows open. Maybe you should consider getting some bars to protect them. Next day, I bought a motion alarm and installed it inside the kitchen. I never had another experience like that in the apartment, but to be honest, I never slept the same way in that bedroom. I was pretty traumatized after those events. At night, I would fear hearing the sound of the kitchen door snapping out of its place. A few years later, I moved out to a larger apartment in another neighborhood. This time, it was on a seventh floor so much harder for intruders to get in through the windows. So to the intruder that came into my apartment and smelled really bad, let's never meet again. Hey everyone, thanks for listening if you've stuck around to this point. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button the subscribe button, and the notification bell to be notified of future episodes as they come out. Make for sure you stalk me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, leave a comment below of a theme you'd like to hear next. Always in need of more stories, so if you have a scary story... If you have a scary story of your own, feel free to send it to my email. All the links are below. Thank you all for your support. Thank you all for your support. No, but really, uh, thank you for your support. All of you, every single one of you, every comment, every like, every narrator out there that's given me an opportunity to come on their show and just help you know, promote my channel and get a little bit more traffic and get known. That really means a lot to me as well. Uh, I, I love I love all the reading all the comments. I love getting feedback from you guys, whether it's, you know, I like this, I don't like this, even the negative shit. It's all good, you know? I, I realize this is the internet, so at some point, you're bound to run into some shithead you're bound to run in some negative comments but honestly predominantly the feedback has been positive and very welcoming so i thank you once again i'll see you guys in the next one